Hi, Chiara. Hi, Don Angel. How are you? Good, thank you. Excellent. Dearest Silesian family of Don Bosco, in the light of our pedagogy and spirituality, this year, we want to rediscover the lay dimension in our charism. I am happy to greet you, and indeed I was thinking of you, because this year I want to dedicate the Strenna to all of you, boys and girls, because you are the good yeast that makes the bread of the human family, the bread of the kingdom of God, grow and become tastier. And Jesus said again, To what can I compare the kingdom of God? It is similar to the yeast which a woman took and mixed into three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The yeast works silently. The leavening occurs in silence, as is the work of the kingdom of God in its inner workings. We are a community of people from different social backgrounds, walks of life, professional profiles, and our work is here today. The Kingdom of God requires our collaboration, but it is above all the Lord's initiative and gift. Our work is weak, seemingly small in the face of the complexity of the world's problems. But if inserted into that of God, it becomes very strong and is not afraid of any difficulties. We can say, therefore, that the Kingdom of God is like this. It's a humble reality, apparently insignificant, and to become part of it, one has to be poor of heart. And do not trust in your own abilities but in the power of God's love. Do not act to be important in the eyes of the world, but precious in the eyes of God, who prefers the simple and the humble. Reality, a kingdom of God that germinates in the world amidst lights and shadows, a reality that is true, filtered, sought after, rejected. We love it and it frightens us. We live here. Pope Francis reminds us of this when he states, Each generation must take up the struggles and achievements of previous generations and lead them to even higher goals. The good, just as love, justice and solidarity are not achieved once and for all. They must be conquered every day. Let us remember, we live here. We cannot leave to tomorrow the good we must do today. The human family is a family with many needs, in need of justice, of dignity for the last and the discarded, in need of truth, in need of peace, as we well know, and of fraternity, in need of care for the common home, in need above all of God. We are called, as the family of Don Bosco, to be leaven in this human family. Humanity, strong, imposing, big, full of questions. 
We are part of it and we also distance ourselves from it. We work here. My name is Eric Ponce. I was born in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, one of the most violent cities in the world. My mother was a pollera. She helped sneak undocumented people across the U.S. border. And my dad was a drug dealer. The atmosphere was so tense that I began to destroy every human connection I had. There was so much crime, killings in our parks, which had never happened before. Almost everyone had lost someone, a loved one, to cry about. There were boys in the streets starving, willing to do anything for a meal. They take you to expensive bars, buy you drugs, and then threaten you. You like this life? Then pay for it. Massacres and shootings, they would mistake you for someone else and just kill you. That's what happened to most of my friends. Many of them are dead, others are in prison. I had always stayed away from religion until I met Juan Carlos Quirarte. He made Christianity credible for me in a tangible human way. I liked his philosophy and we connected, and I discovered the power of his religiosity, his ability to express himself in writing, to include the excluded, to introduce God to the boys as motivation for change. All this gave me a new respect for the church. Claro que yo creo en Dios, lo sé porque él nunca me abandona. Una prueba sobrevivo en una guerra que invadió mi zona. Claro que lo siento y si lo siento es a través de las personas. Como el padre Kirarte que utilizó mi arte para mandar mensaje para el Cersai. El perdón al que ha pecado lo que me pudo enseñar. Un futuro peso, chicos, no los vino a pedrear. Al contrario, les dio sueños para que puedan progresar. Que la luz me lo acompañe donde quiera que la lucha él vaya a continuar. The ultimate goal of Don Bosco's mission is, together with the salvation of his boys, the transformation of society. Without the laity, how can we reach there? The church has need of lay people and of the lay vision. To speak the language of humanity, to live humanity. I grew up in the courtyard of the Silesian Oratory of Andrea. I owe a great deal of gratitude to the Silesians, first of all for having accompanied me through all the stages of my growth, to the point of bringing me here today to be the first citizen of a great reality in Puglia. I am grateful for the joy they transmitted to me, for their patience, for their humility, for having accompanied me even through difficult processes of growth, for having been discreet by my side, making me realize what I could really do with my life. But that experience was not confined to the courtyard of the Silesian Oratory. There we learned that we had to be salt of the earth. There I learned what it means to believe and for others. There I matured in my choice to try my hand at the difficult exercise of democracy and the lessons. And today with this tricolour sash, I feel the weight of a great responsibility to try to accompany my people on a path of rebirth on a path of cohesion, on a path of care. I have chosen as the motto of my mandate, the persons at the center, the care of the persons starting from the smallest. Don Bosco had such foresight that he understood that he had to be there by the side of the boys, that he had to humbly ensure in such a way that they felt safe, that they felt they were in a harbor, where they could truly build even on their frailties the richness and beauty of their lives. Don Bosco the Silesians are hope for us, for many. And also as a local administrator I would say that hope is indeed what our communities need. Hope that is joy, hope that is simplicity, hope that has content, 
hope that has a vision. We cannot just be looking at what's happening every day. We must build these seeds of hope, but do it with human hands. Do it with the heart that beats, with the heart of people who are aware of how much good there is in the world that must be rediscovered, that must be uplifted, that must truly become a testimony for many and many other generations. Thanks to the Silesians, thanks to the young people around the world who around the name of this saint are betting for better communities. Don Bosco did not engage in politics, but he can speak to all the representatives of the various levels of government because his commitment was clearly oriented towards the good of his boys. Our common voice can find access and a listening ear far beyond confessional boundaries if together we embody the same zeal today. Living for God means, I think, having an attitude of seeking all that is rich in humanity. For only that which is fully human is divine, can be holy. The layperson is a Christian who sanctifies the world from within who works at the creation and construction of the invisible kingdom of God, like a sachet of yeast. Holiness, distant, dreamt of, difficult, sought after. We try and feel like giving up. We fall, we get back up and we try again, here. It was the 24th of June 1855, and at the oratory it was a double celebration. It was a great sunny day. The whole of Turin honoured and celebrated the city's patron saint, but it was also John Bosco's feast day. The night before he told his boys, tomorrow you want to make a feast for me and I want to thank you. On my part I want to give you the gift you most desire. So each of you take a card and write on it the gift you desire. I'm not rich, but if you do not ask me for the royal palace, I will do everything I can to please you. When he read the cards, Don Bosco found serious questions and others bizarre. Some asked him for a hundred kilos of nougat to have for the whole year. Another for a puppy instead of the one he left at home. Giovanni Roda, a friend of Domenico Savio, asked him for a trumpet like the one of the Bersaglieri, because I want to join the musical band. On Domenico Savio's note, however, he found only five words. Help me to become a saint. Sure, things have changed. Who would say such a thing today? But one thing has not changed. To be a saint takes courage. We have the recipe for holiness. Don Bosco gave it to us, you remember? Cheerfulness, doing one's duties and doing good to others. It is in fact a whole program to show us how to be leaven in the small space where God has planted us. Therefore, we all can and must strive for holiness. Without you, we can go nowhere. We know well that Don Bosco, from the very beginning of his mission at Valdocco, involved many lay people, friends and collaborators, so that they could participate in his mission among the young. It immediately aroused sharing and co-responsibility on the part of the clergy, laity, men and women. This is a point of no return, because it is the only viable way today. Do you want examples of lay saints? We are in the background of a great tree that has produced beautiful fruits from Don Bosco to the present day. We can think of Zatti, Zeferino Namunkarai and Laura Vicuña. Albert Mavelli, Dominic Savio, Alessandrina da Costa, Attilio Giordani, the young martyrs of Potsdam, the young Bashir of Pakistan, or the Indian boy Bororo Simao, 
and the benefactress, Dorothea of Chobitea. Also Mama Margaret, a beautiful figure of holiness. Of course, Mama Margaret, the holiness at the doorstep, the holiness of a mother who moulded the heart of her beloved son John, and who accompanied the birth of our charism without knowing it, in a simple way, by giving her life, the life she had and that she had left behind. And let's not forget Artemi de Zatti, canonized just a few months ago. He lived his holiness as a layperson, a nurse, practicing charity in a small village hospital, a model of dedication to his people through ordinary work, having God as the source of his generosity and his faith as the motivating force in his life. Of course. And one after the other, they show us how to continue working for the kingdom of God. And how to make this third measure of flour grow. I conclude, and I do so with this certainty. All of us, consecrated men and women, lay men and women of our Silesian family, are committed and want to live with a true educational passion for our young people. And this because we are certain that the leaven is rightly the gospel of Christ, the Lord. It is He, the Lord, who shows us how everything He touches, everything He looks at, is filled with life. It is He who makes all things new. The Kingdom of God is always in becoming, always in fermentation, always growing. Real, human, holy. A reality where everyone has their place. And you, dear young man. You, my dear brother, my dear sister of our Silesian family. You father, mother, you educator, teacher. All of you. Each one of you, each one of us, must say to each other, what is my place in this reality of the Kingdom of God?